Welcome to Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas. Please go through our past library of episodes and you can hear funny stories. Uh, the ones about R.H. Bolton that we highlighted last week are my favorites. Uh, so make sure you go through there, like us on Instagram, and uh, make sure you follow the podcast. Tap that follow button, tap the subscribe button. The algorithm has changed. So if uh, some people are not getting notified that have already liked and followed and subscribed. So just make sure you do that again. Chancellor Hans, start us out with uh, a saying of the day. Saying of the day is we need the courage of the young. Uh, that's from FDR, Franklin Roosevelt. You know, the only thing I would add, we also need the wisdom of the age. <laughs> and, uh, and when you have that combination, you're deadly. You're in good shape. Uh, I want to talk a little today about the uh, State of the Union address, uh, not just uh, Biden's, which was last week, uh, but uh, the it's in the Constitution. Article 2, Section 3, Clause 1, the president shall from time to time give to the Congress information on the State of the Union and make recommendations. Doesn't say you should make a re-election speech, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, the first one was by Washington. It was 1,089 words, relatively short. And, and uh, Jimmy Carter had the longest. His was 33,000 words. And I was there as a member of Congress, and Marvin Leith, who represented Waco, and was a very good congressman, very thoughtful. He uh, uh, he said, is he ever going to shut up? <laughs> you know, he leaned over to me, he was seated next to me. Is he ever going to shut up? It went on and on. But the longest in speeches was Bill Clinton. And, you know, Bill Clinton, I mean, he had put a lot of words on you, and when he nominated a Dukakis, at the Democratic National Convention, uh, ninety six, he he had uh, uh, he went on and on and on, and near the end he said, "And in closing, in the they gave him a standing ovation." <laughs> I don't he remember that. Gave, gave him a standing ovation. The minute he said, "And in closing, boy, they," and he was on the Johnny Carson show the next night, uh, and did a good job of trying to explain why he went so long but uh he he knew he was going to be running for president someday and he he wanted to get that exposure but a lot of people did not think uh highly mm -hmm. of his uh lengthy speech <laughs> and but you, you know uh washington and adams both did uh a speech uh to congress uh in a short period of time they'd, they'd do it annually and uh, it changed to in writing with Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson liked to write. Uh, he, he wasn't wild about giving speeches. And uh, he was a great writer. And so he changed it where he would write out the state of the nation and uh, what was happening and what the problems were and how they should go about solving those problems. In 1913... Woodrow Wilson changed that and went back to giving speeches. That all changed with radio and television. It's an amazing thing to go to. You get one ticket for yourself and one for whoever you want to give it to. You give spouse. When you're a freshman, when you're first getting sworn in, you'll have some older members give you their tickets hmm. so that you can give it to. I had, when I was sworn in, a Tom uh, Stacy and his wife, Melinda, that they, I, I got two tickets and got them in. And uh, a few years ago, he framed those tickets and uh, and gave them to me. I still have them in my office. Mm -hmm. But the, the people are invited, you know, the vice president and the members of the Senate. And, and the doorkeeper announces them, you know, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Doorkeeper, the vice president of the United States and the members of the U.S. Senate. Uh, you'll have the uh, diplomatic corps, and these be ambassadors from different countries will be invited. It'll be a short list of that. The cabinet members. And there's always one cabinet member is away at some place, isolated in case you had some catastrophe and uh, you know the cabinet members were all killed or something. You also have someone from the House uh, one from both parties in the Senate that are away 
so that uh, if something happened, you you would be able to govern. Uh, you have uh, the Supreme Court. Biden the other night called them out, mm-hmm. and uh, that uh, see how that works. Uh, usually, you don't say anything. I was going to ask you, in your memory, do you recall a president ever <clears throat> directly addressing the court like that? The- no, uh, that's the first time I've ever seen it happen. But I'll tell you what, with reality TV, people feel obligated to say something. You know, I, I mean, there were a couple of members that yelled out things and that uh, I, I always thought is inappropriate. Uh, you can have a press conference afterwards, but uh, I, I just never did do that and, and was never tempted was that out of respect to the office even if you disagreed with yeah, who the president it, 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 was you, you didn't agree i mean jimmy carter there was you know a lot of things i didn't agree with him but uh, for his state of the union i wasn't going to say anything or i might say something afterwards at, at a short press conference but i wasn't going to interrupt him mm-hmm. we've had some of that and some of them been friends of mine that i know but i i just don't think it's good now, the other night they had the fellow that uh, lost his son in Afghanistan. You know, if I were president, I'd, I'd tell him, that, that don't press charges on him. Right. Uh, that's such an emotional thing, and, and you, you try to keep people from um, interrupting the speech. And, you know, if you don't have some decor to it, you, you'll have people shouting all the time. And so you can't get anything done. First one I went to uh, – I was asking Jack Brooks, congressman from Beaumont, about it. And he said it's thrilling, and, and no matter how long you've been around, he had been there 30-something years that time. He said when you go in, they'll say, you know, Mr. Speaker, and he says, Mr. Doorkeeper, we have the members of the president's cabinet and the vice president in the Senate and the Supreme Court justices and, and, and all that. He said, look. If you don't get goosebumps by the time they announce the president, you shouldn't run for re-election. I always liked that, yeah. you know, because it's true. It didn't matter who it was. Yeah. Jimmy Carter, he spoke a long time. The shortest was Ronald Reagan, 31 minutes versus an hour and 29 minutes of Bill Clinton. Biden's was just political, and I had uh, some friends of mine, uh, Tony Privet, a friend of mine from uh, uh, Lubbock, uh, he wrote me a note, and what about Trump and, and uh Rush Limbaugh, and the the presidents have been, and in, in Reagan uh, really is one, to introduce people that are in the gallery with the first lady. And Reagan did it for the guy that uh, swam out when the plane crashed in uh, 1901 and, and swam out to rescue the people. Uh, he had the guy there, mm-hmm. and uh, it was someone that was uh, a federal worker that was in the bureaucracy and he swam out and, and saved the lives of some of the people when the plane crashed in the uh, Potomac. Tony let me know that Trump recognized Rush Limbaugh. L- Limbaugh had cancer at the time, was dying, and he recognized him. The, the other night, Congressman Lewis, who passed away and was a civil rights worker, uh, Biden mentioned him. And and that doesn't bother me. They're, they're, they're going to mention people from time to time that, have contributed one side or another. I mean, I, I know that Limbaugh was a guy that uh, Democrats hated and everything, but he was an icon as far as influencing people and changing politics, so that that doesn't offend me. Uh, the, Biden was just, uh, it was a campaign speech, and I think he wanted to address the issue that the Trump people have been using against him, that he wasn't capable and so he wanted to come across strong and tough, and, and some people thought he came across too tough or too mean or whatever, and some questioned, you know, whether he could go that long or not. And he wanted to prove, in my opinion, that he could go a long time and that he was actually capable of uh, physically and mentally being president of the United States. But what happens when he's not in that state uh, does that make it more of a problem for him in the future? Who knows? Uh, you've got two guys, uh, one in the late 70s, one eighty, early 80s. You know, the public's going to be very interested in seeing how capable they are. And then you've got a third, and that's uh, Robert Kennedy. And uh, 
he he's going to get some votes. Mm-hmm. Now I tell you, some people don't like him running and wish he wouldn't run. He's going to get some votes. And the only thing that's really upset me uh, uh, about his campaign is that President Biden has not signed off on Secret Service to guard him. And the Kennedys, you know, they've had two assassinated. Regardless whether I agree with him or not, I think he needs to have protection mm-hmm. uh, in this, especially in this day and time. And that, uh, but I think he, that's a big gamble for President Biden not doing that because if something did happen to him, it it, it would just destroy him. Yeah, you know yeah. that that he was withholding security from one of the candidates. I I can't believe someone around President had and said, "Mr. President, we need to do this." Mm-hmm. And uh, but but they hadn't. And but Kennedy's going to get some votes. Uh, he's got an appeal, and uh, there'll be older voters, but there are going to be older voters that are Democrat voters that uh, have a ha- have an, a strong affection uh, in their mind and in their heart for the Kennedy family, and uh, and and he may get some Republican votes, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, he will he, he will get some votes. I can assure you of that. By the way, congratulations on predicting a unanimous a decision from the Supreme Court on the the Trump ballot issue. You said it would be nine nothing, and it, it, it was. I think it was. There, there, there are going to be some other votes come up that will not be nine nothing. But on that one, that's nine to nothing. Is that you can't go around and have the Secretary of State in Colorado and what the hell were they thinking that they can decide who gets to run for president and who doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, someone in Michigan decided, and I think Maine had someone. And, uh, look, let the public decide who's going to get elected president. I think that 9-0 was a good message for the country. Too. Yeah, it was. It was. You know, it, you can't hijack a president presidential campaign. Right. So You called it. <laughs> well, I was fortunate on that. Uh, the, the most State of the Union speeches was FDR had 11. Mm-hmm. And uh, at least Zachary Taylor had one. And uh, Harrison did not have one. Uh, he was died, you know, caught, caught pneumonia and died 32 days later. And Garfield got assassinated before he could give one. And, and of course, during that time, they were sending up a message rather than giving a speech. Mm-hmm. The, the two closest together that we've had in uh, State of the Union speech – Truman gave one in January as he was leaving in 1953. And uh, Eisenhower gave one as he came in on February 2nd, 1953. So those are two pretty close together. The last six presidents have not given the State of the Union an address the year they were sworn in because they've just gotten through giving an address of what they see the problems are and what they're going to do at their inaugural speech. Mm-hmm. So they don't go ahead and do a State of the Union speech uh, that uh, at that time, and they wait till the next year. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Can I ask you a quick question? When we see the the president is announced and walks out, you always see people trying to get no, close to the president. I understand that. I, I get what they're doing, the photo or whatever. What do guys that have been around a while that are sitting over there, what do you think of those people that are – clamoring to get to the president you're sitting on the other side looking you know you've been there for five well, years whatever he, he, he's gonna you know the president's gonna make the speech and uh it's gonna say start at eight o'clock so the floor of the house will start filling it up uh earlier but there'll be some people bill natcher from uh uh kentucky at five o'clock he'd go over and sit down on the row, so he'd be the first person to shake hands with the president when he came in. He hmm. always did that. Hmm. And some somebody said they they uh, there was a member one time went over and got to there about four thirty and got to his spot and he told me you're never going to get a bill out of education. He was chairman of the education committee. Never going to get a bill out of education <laughs> committee. Take my spot. <laughs> and uh, a lot of members get over there early so they can get a good seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never, I, I was too busy to do that. Are and those people you've often said that there's politicians, they're show horses and work horses. Are the people gathered trying to get the picture over there, shake the hand? Are they a little, a lot up? of them are show horses, okay. but they're, Bill Natcher, uh, you know, was both, mm-hmm. uh, but he wasn't a show horse except state of the union. 
and he wanted everyone in his district in Kentucky to know that he was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie Wilson, one time, uh, what was the old boy's name from uh, Houston that had the TV show would point out problems? Uh, uh, Zimmer or something? Uh, Slime oh, in the ice machine. Yeah, he was. Uh, I what remember was who he? you're talking about. Well, he had talked to Charlie about getting tickets for him and. And uh, this guy's date and, and Charlie and whoever he was going to take to the uh, uh, play Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. And uh, and uh, Zimmer or something like that. Anyway, they went to it instead of going to the <laughs> State of the Union. And the guy went on TV and criticized Charlie for going. <laughs> and hell, he gotten Charlie had gotten him the tickets and he invited him to go with him. And uh, Charlie was really upset about that. But uh, if you're going to do something questionable uh, and do it with a reporter, they'll report on it, you know? <laughs> Barry and Charlie Wilson's character, though. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, and I said, well, are you going to say it didn't happen? He said, hell, everybody in my district knows that, you know, that sounds like me. It sounds like Charlie, <laughs> what he did. And he told him, hey, I listened to the speech later, you know, it's okay. It didn't hurt him, did it? Didn't hurt him. He uh, got reelected, <laughs> right? But uh, I'm uh, Zimmer or Zimmerman. I can't remember. Slime and Ice Machine was his favorite. Yeah, it, you know he'd talk about the the restaurants had been written up, mm-hmm. and he always had something strange to say about everything. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening right now that know the guy's name and exactly who you're talking about. It'd be fun to hear from you. Uh, yeah. You can send us an email info at Hans Podcast. Dot com. You can comment about anything uh, that you hear today. We like hearing from you, so uh, feel free to do that or comment on our Instagram account, which is at Best Storyteller Podcast. Uh, did you happen to watch the Republican response? And if you did, what'd you think? You know, Katie Brett did a good job. Uh, she wasn't, uh, she got a lot of criticism, but I think she was just talking as a citizen. And uh, could they had better? Probably could have. And, uh, I know her, know her well. Her her predecessor uh, was Richard Shelby, who was my best friend in Congress, and he was a guy that uh, uh, served in the House and Senate, was elected in 78 and retired in 22. And so, uh, you know, he had a full 40 years that, uh, that he was there. How's that person that – who? how is the person that gives the response? How are they chosen? Uh, the party makes a decision, and the leaders in the party. Uh, I, th- I think she was probably chosen by the party leaders, but I'd say that Trump would have had a big say. On a lighter note, Chancellor, did you hear about that flight in China that got delayed by four hours? And what she, the, yeah, it was uh, South China Airlines, and someone started that it's good luck if you'll pitch some coins in the engine. <laughs> it don't do anything to the engine. You know, don't, I mean, that was just stupid. And this guy had a handful of coins and threw them in the engine when he walked by. Didn't have a, uh, a walkway. And they just walked out from the building, across the tarmac to the plane and went up the stairs. But when he walked by the engine, he just threw in a bunch of coins. And, and they asked him how many, he said three or five, or, you know, mm-hmm. I guess they were trying to figure out how many. But uh, they want to make sure they got them all out. Yeah, they want to make sure they got them all. I, that's like the time the the guys in Demet put the snakes in the high school. Uh, they they reported that thirty nine rattlesnakes and fifteen water mm. moccasins and things like that. And I didn't believe that. I said they just put that in there so the guys that put the snakes in there would be afraid <laughs> to get the snakes next time. So who knows. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to that guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, in China, uh, due process, in China, Japan, South Korea, there's not a lot of due process. Right. And if you're up against the government, good luck. You know, it's not going to go well. Saying of the days, we need the courage of the young. And I add to that, the uh, wisdom of the age uh, also helps.